Should we do this? OK. <clears throat> uh, so welcome, everybody. Uh, thank you very much, first, to uh, K17T for hosting the Team Talks and inviting me to, to be here with you. Uh, my name is Andres Almeray. I'm a Mexican living in Basel, Switzerland. So let me go back and say, Grüezi miteinander. That's always gets a laugh of you, of you people. That I love it. I don't speak uh, Swiss Deutsch. And I, ich spreche keine Deutsch. Ich spreche Deutschli. Anyway, so what, um, what Tobias was saying about the uh, topic of today, ASCII doctor, maybe there's something I can show you that will help you uh, put Java code and documentation together. So I suppose most of you are Java developers or developers of some kind. Any content authors here that are not developers? Okay, perfect. Anybody here has used or seen ASCII Doctor before? Only a handful, perfect. All right, so this is what I'm going to show. Um, so ASCII Doctor, uh, let's, let's go with the uh, homepage here. ASCII Doctor is a syntax that is similar to Markdown. If you haven't seen Markdown before on a GitHub README page, uh, well, ASCII Doctor is kind of the same idea, but it gives you more syntax elements. While Markdown is very minimal, and uh, when you need to write more content or fancy content, you have to mix in HTML tags. ASCII Doctor gives you pretty much everything that you need in order to write perfect HTML. But it not only stops there, it can also render to PDF or EPUB, or Kindle, or other formats, even DocBook. And when you render to DocBook, then you have a, a host of other formats that you can render to. Now, the idea of ASCII Doct is uh, to supply a syntax that's very easy to remember and that you can write using any simple text editor. There are editors out there that will give you uh, some kind of content assist, like uh, kind of a rich editor, but the idea is to write content and not to concentrate too much on the tool itself. Um, Six years, six or seven years ago, uh, Dan Allen took the project ASCII Doc, which the toolchain was written in Python, and rewrote it in Ruby and renamed it as ASCII Doctor. And since he did that, we got a huge explosion of elements or projects in the ASCII Doctor space. So there is the main ASCII Doctor uh, project. This is the basis, this is the one implemented in Ruby. And we have a version called ASCII Doctor J that runs in Java using JRuby. And because of this, we can run it anywhere we want to, such as a Maven plugin if you used to do in Maven, or a Gradle plugin if you like to use Gradle. Or you can also run it on your IDEs, whether it's Eclipse or IntelliJ. And uh, there is also a port of ASCII Doctor that uh, is ASCII Doctor JS, so just yes, JavaScript, because Atlas Law, if anything can be written in JavaScript, it will be written in JavaScript. Which means that you can have access to extensions that run on the browser. There is an ASCII Doctor extension, you can see the logo right here. If I were to display a plain ASCII Doctor file, let's say, Let's go here. It's very likely that it has a README on GitHub. <coughs> GitHub supports ASCII Doctor files, automatically renders the content. But if I look at the raw content there, uh, actually, oh no, that's it. Sorry. Uh, I don't want to do that. I want to see the raw content there. And I turn on this. Actually, it was already on. That's funny. I guess it's disabled right now in Firefox. I didn't update it. This should have worked, but if the demo doesn't break, then it's not live. Supposedly, the, the extension should have worked, and you can also see it in, in, the, in Chrome that the rendered content will look very similar to what we saw here before. But anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. So let's get into the, uh, the content itself. I already have, this is not the, the window I want to show. I am running IntelliJ, and uh, that's my ID of choice. And I already installed the ASCII Doctor plugin. On one side, you can type content here. And on the other side, you will see the rendering content in the default browser. Now, and uh, you can use the markdown syntax if you are already uh, used to it. But you also can use the ASCII Doc syntax. So if I make it a little bigger, and uh, we can start by using an equal sign and say this is a title. And it renders a title. And now we can start writing some content like, uh, hello, this is Team Talks number three, hosted by K17. 
K17T. And uh, we can have a list. Uh, here is, well, oh. actually, what we want to do is make sure that this one is bold. So we do that. And that uh, we want to make this italic. So we can do that. And I will render this content so you can barely see it. So what I'm going to do is it's already safe. And I'm going to run this also as part of a Gradle build. So it's important. You do not have to use Gradle or Maven to make use of ASCII Doctor. But if you do, if you make your documentation be part of a build tool, then you gain additional benefits, which I'll get in a moment. So for example, in the case of Gradle, I have my project set up. It's very easy to do. And once I run uh, Gradle and uh, I can run the ASCII Doctor task, and make it run continuously. So this will process the ASCII doctor sources, generate HTML, and have the build running in the background. Anytime that I make a change to my ASCII doctor sources, then the, back, the, the build will trigger again. Actually, I don't want to do ASCII doctor. I want to do a create guide just in case, which will execute a few more things, but actually it's running ASCII doctor. So my file is this one. Here it is. And I notice that we have something here. So there's the title. There's already some version here. And uh, when was the last time that I published this? I can make it disappear if I want to, or I can change these numbers as well. This is already coming from, from the uh, build. And you can see now this is definitely remarked, and this is italic. So we can continue going. I, please feel free to stop me at any, time, at any time when you have any questions. I also get very excited about these topics. I tend to speak very fast. English is not my native language, so again, if you feel like you have any questions or something, please let me know. All right? Wave so I can see you. Uh, more things that we can do, uh, for, for example, here is some code uh, comments. And uh, we have, actually, let's put this in different lines. We have list also such as one element, uh, second element. And here's another list. But notice what I'm going to do with this one. Uh, say this is element one dot dot, and then some content. And I can say element two dot dot, more content. Save it. The build is running on the background, so this is a, a capability of the Grail build tool. And when I refresh here, it looks like this. <coughs> Notice how this list looks like. I can change how this list is rendered by going here at the top of the list and put a tag. When you see the square brackets, these are known as tags, and ASCII doctor interprets this as some kind of hints. So for this particular type of list, I can say horizontal. And uh, notice that the rendering changed a little bit here. Uh, saved and then do a refresh. It will take just a moment when this is finished. There we go. Come on. And now the list looks like this. Okay, so this is the basic. Now, for those of you that have written um, markdown content, you eventually would like to write tables, right? How do you write tables in markdown? You use HTML tags. And whether it's good or bad, is the thing that we have. In the case of ASCII Doctor, I'm going to put it uh, here at the top. We can do it this way. Here's a special block. And uh, there are many ways that we can write the header. The default one is the first row will be the header. So we can say column 1 and column two, column three. Notice that if it's only one row, then it's just like regular content. But the moment that I start adding more elements, so this will be cell one one and cell 1.2 and <coughs> cell 1.3. I can also, uh, let's put this uh, here, there we go. I can also do it this way. I can do cell 2.1, 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 cell 2.1,
cell 2.3 and cell 3.3 so I can put them all, the, all in one row or I can separate it in, in each one of them I can also say alignment so for example calls and give it some parameters I'm going to use the angle bracket to the left then to the top and then to the right so when this is rendered so make sure it's saved then it goes and when I look at the render content come on takes a little bit there we go so you see the headers and the content is aligned to the left the center and the right you can also specify uh, paddings and, uh, and a few other things and you can even embed ASCII content within the table as well. The advantage of this syntax is that you can pretty much see the whole content there without being obscured by the HTML tags. So again, the point of the ASCII doc syntax is write content, focus on the content, not so much on the syntax. More things that we can do, um, uh, say uh, we can have sources, for example, uh, Java. It's said that you should not write Java code if you're not in an IDE. Well, I happen to be in an IDE, don't have any code completion here, but we can say something like class uh, sample and private, well, that's not how you write private, string id and do that and uh, when it's saved there you go and then refresh yeah it looks like that i can give it a title the uh, the title can be here something like uh, this is sample.java and uh, i can say i think is it options i think is um line nums is one of the options notice that here we have some red title and some numbers <coughs> and uh, when i switch to here we got the build renders and we're done now it looks like that oh i didn't get the line numbers i, I think i need to uh, activate something else but now it says a hint that here is shown some java code great now how are we doing so far okay all right i'm gonna show you so this is nice it's very easy to write um, ascii doc uh, coming from markdown i'm gonna show you the feature that sold me the format because as a developer i eventually had to write some documentation and like many other people i hate it i hate it because of the tools if i were if there were a way for me to write documentation as a write code that would make my life easier because i like to write code so one of the problems with writing technical documentation is that you modify the production code, somebody writes the documents, perhaps it's you, so you're sad for a while, and then we make the first release and everything is happy. Then there's more fixes or more features in production and somebody forgot to update documentation and uh, they're out of sync, out of date, and that's not good. And then trying to figure out all the places where production code has changed and you have to make the updates in documentation takes forever. If there were a way for me to say, I want to reference this piece of production or test or some other thing that is coming from the, 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 the developers and put it in documentation, that would be much better, right? So what if we're able to do something like that? Say, uh, oh, before I actually get to that, I have to show one more thing. Now, remember the version number that appeared before here, uh, the top? Here are more things that I can say. I can say something like this. I was playing in a moment what is this syntax. I can say uh, author is Andres, and red number will be uh, 000 snapshot. Or if we want to be fancy and we go to production, this is version 100, right? So save, here comes the build, and uh, when I do this, there we go. Oh, so funny. This didn't take on. Uh, maybe it's another one. So what's going on here? 
These things are known as attributes, where we as developers know them by some other name, variables. So we can define as many attributes as we want. For example, we can define an attribute foo with a value OK 17T. And then we can display this to here. Foo. Notice that IntelliJ rendered that correctly. When the build runs again, and I do a refresh, this still displays the same thing. So if you don't believe me, uh, <coughs> let's use the wrong nom name for the company, like this. Let the ROM build again, and then do a refresh. Come on, and there it is. Right. So perhaps you have a question in your mind. If we have variables, what else can we do with variables in our programs? Conditionals. Say, let's create another variable here. This is the variable var. And uh, actually, we don't define that yet. And then we say something here. If define the variable foo, then this content is visible. If define the variable or attribute var, this content is hidden. Now notice that IntelliJ didn't render that. So we save, let the build run, and uh, do a refresh. The content is visible because the variable exists, but the other variable var does not. You can have this one conditional like this, or if you want, we can take this out. This content is visible because foo is defined, and then we can do uh, endif and close this block. Yeah, uh, this has to do like that. There we go. So save the uh, the build runs once again and render, and we get that. So you can put an if def around a whole paragraph. We can even grab this content here, duplicate it and use another block with four plus signs. And this renders the content as is. There's no, um, there's no translation to ASCII doc. So if I go here and let the build run, once again, refresh, that's the content exactly how this should be rendered. So far, so good? OK, so now we have the basis. We have uh, basic syntax, we have variables, we have blocks. So what if I were able to refer to another block here? So let's put uh, source and Java. And I know for a fact that because I'm running within the Gradle build, I have access to the other files that are part of my project. If I show you how this project looks like, uh, Let's make it, can I make it bigger? Wow, it doesn't look nice. Uh, no, it doesn't work. So I have a multi project built on one module, I have the ASCII doctor sources, and another module I have some Java sources. So this could be Groovy, JRuby, XML, JavaScript, you name it, any kind of sources. And uh, because I'm part of this build, I have access to some predefined attributes. One of them is the root directory of my whole project. I also have access to the, uh, the, uh, an attribute that defines the directory of my current project. So in this case, it will be guide. I want to use the root there because I want to reach out to this Java file. So what I'm going to do is include, I'm going to make this uh, bigger, like this, include a file here. And that file will come from an Attribute. First, I have to also have to say I want all substitutions to be of type attributes. 
so that this variable that I'm going to write here, you see, I keep switching between attributes and variables because they're for me, they're pretty much the same. Uh, this one here, and then uh, this is the beginning of my project, which is here, this one. I had to find this path all the way to my file. I can, if I want to, I could define variables here, say for example, uh, source job or java source is equal to source main java and i can define the java package to be org uh, core damp uh, this is gradle oci i think that's the right one uh, org on gradle oci and this is actually this is groovy code so yeah, it doesn't matter the name, the name of the, art, the attribute is whatever you want to make it. Okay, so now I can say something like another attribute, uh, Java source, whoop, like this, Java source, and then a slash, and I can say the Java package, like this, slash, the name of the class, OCI plugin, I believe and uh, save. Notice that IntelliJ doesn't know how to resolve that because IntelliJ is not aware of the, uh, the Gradle root deer attribute. Whereas the others, you can see here, it actually resolves to the correct one. So at least we know that part is nice. So we go here, uh, the build should have done already. And now we just render, oh, it says directive at index <coughs> doc include this one doesn't know what to do. Why? Because I failed to include the project itself. So the path is wrong. What we should have said is plugins, OCI, Gradle, plugin, like this. That is the full path. I expect the build to pick up right now. Notice that. That is actual production code. Nice. Uh, but if I want to embed a full file, uh, sometimes I don't want to embed the, uh, the header. Can I do something about that? It would be silly to change production code so that I can have better documentation. But what I can do is I can tell uh, ASCII doctor to include certain lines. So if we look at the source code um, here, this one, the header starts at line one and finishes at line 17. So if I go to my index file here and say, I want from line 17 until, what would be the last line? 50 or something like that. If I start moving my code, I will have to change this one. So I can make use of a data type from Ruby, which is called ranges. And if you give it a minus one, it will always go at the end of the collection. So I can shorten my file or make it bigger. It doesn't matter. It will always pick up until the end of the file. So save. Let the build run and uh, uh, refresh. Whoop, maybe that was line 18 now. It's better, right? Okay, good. And we can even just do it from pieces to pieces. So if we wanted to grab, let's make it bigger, to grab just the, uh, this method, it would be line 36 to 39. And also this method without the spaces to 41 to 46, uh, 45, we can go on, right? But if we refactor our code, things will change and things will break, right? Uh, is there something that we can do about this? Yes, we can. Say that we want to grab these ones. And uh, so I think this is, um, it's begin, no, this is, hold on a second. Uh, I need to know to figure out how to do this. It's a good time to show you that if you go into the ASCII doctor, go into docs, then the ASCII doctor user manual, by the way, this whole site is written with ASCII doctor itself. If you want to know how to write a site like this one, the sources are in the GitHub directory. You can have a table of contents automatically generated by all the different sections. In the example I'm showing, I don't have any sections, but I could have created many sections. So what I want to know is how to make tags 
and uh, so let's search for uh, tax and uh, continue searching there there's something somewhere I should have searched for this before oh where are the tax uh, no that's font icons we don't want that and uh, let's continue searching it will be it'll come very soon there we go here's not that it come on metadata did I just skip it? Um, I think uh, include, there's include, here's the tags attributes, uh, here is tag and end. That's what I wanted. So if I go into my code and say tag, give it any name, foo, and say end, and the name of the tag, like this. Go into my documentation and say, I don't want to include this. I want to include a tag, foo, like this. Uh, let the build run. And then refresh. And there is, it's only that. But you will notice that the indentation is off. Can we do this? It would be again silly to reformat the documentation, the production code. Well, what I can say is go here and say indent zero. Uh, let's rerun again. There we go. Refresh. And there we go. Or you say indent eight or something else, and then you can push it to the other side. Now, you can put as many tags as you want, and you can include even nested tags. And again, this is the reason why I'm using ASCII Doctor now, because I needed to write a huge documentation for many of the open source projects that I manage. And being able to keep track of production and embed it, it's, it's really good. But things do not stop here, my friends, because uh, what ASCII Doctor is doing, it calculates an AST of your documentation. So what is an AST? It's an abstract syntax tree. Where else do you find this? When you compile code. So if you get an abstract syntax representation of your documentation, what else can you do? You can manipulate the tree. Say you can add new blocks, you can remove, you can change everything, and then continue generating documentation. So you remember that tag that I showed you earlier, horizontal. Will it be possible to extend the documentation so that you will you could create your own tags. Well, yes, you can. And uh, let me show you an example of that. Uh, dev, uh, GitHub, and uh, ASCII Docto pick Latin example. I'm going to show the code here. Here's a very basic uh, document. It's a title, version, and uh, some context here in ASCII doc. And notice that here we have some text in English. This content actually explains what the uh, pig Latin <coughs> syntax is. It's basically uh, something that people in the US like to do. And what this code or this tag will do is translate an English sentence into its corresponding pig Latin uh, content. So what I'm going to do here is uh, make sure that I run ASCII Doctor. and then open the resulting uh, document. And see that is in English, that is English, and that is the peak Latin equivalent. How did this work? Well, what I can do is I can apply something that is called an extension. Extensions can be written in Ruby, Java, or any other language. In this case, I wrote it in Groovy. And what I do here is first define an extension, give it a name, and it's of certain type. So that is this thing, uh, Pig Latin Block. Pig Latin Block is a type of block processor, so it's going to, to process a whole paragraph. And when it finds that content, what this code is doing, basically this code, if you've ever seen some Groovy or Ruby code, what this thing is doing is reading every line breaking the lines into words, and for each word, applying a transformation, and then joining them back again with the spaces. And this code here is the one that knows how to do the transformation from a regular world into a peak Latin word. And you end up with this. 
So what could you do with this? Well, you can do an automatic translation if you have a, a translation service. If you have conditionals, then you can have business-friendly documentation and developer-friendly documentation on the same file instead of having multiple files. You can also in include different documents or different ASCII.sources to, to generate a single book or, or any other document. This is exactly how the ASCII doctor manual was created. Here's another thing that you can do. Uh, let me switch to ASCII Dr. J a screenshot example. How many of you write a uh, web applications? How many of you have to maintain documentation where there are screenshots of the applications? How tiresome it is to take those screenshots, right? And to update those things. Would it be great if part of the documentation were able to capture those screenshots? Well, let me tell you, you can. There's an extension called ASCII Dr. J a screenshot that allows you to do that. And uh, here in Gradle, here's an example document. So now you know this is the title, author, versions, and content. Here's a section. And here is another special block that has a custom tag, Jeb, that, that resolves to an extension. And what this code is doing here is usually it's actually using something called WebDriver uh, or Jeff, which is an extension that allows you to drive WebDriver using Groovy code. So what this Groovy code will do is open a browser to that URL and apply some function, something that looks like jQuery so they can find content. So what this will do is open the, this homepage and take a screenshot at the end and render it in some default name. You can change many things, but let me run this for you. So we do, do a clean ASCII. You will notice that for a moment, what? Uh, let's go into Gradle. Uh, for a moment, there will be a screenshot, uh, it will be a browser appearing, and everything is done by the bill itself. So, hands off the keyboard. And uh, there it is. Takes a screenshot. There's a page, resolves, done. And now, when I open the render document, I see that image. And you can use Jeb and WebDriver to click on the buttons and follow the links and find all the content you want and take the screenshot with the different sizes. You can have different frames, look like a desktop or a mobile. It's up to you. The whole screenshot allows you to do this. Now, you will notice that there is some content here, but it's not rendered. It's because the way that these pages uh, are rendered change, and I, I did not have enough time to figure out where were the elements, for example, where are the IDs of the elements that I want to capture. So what's going on? Is this content not executed at all? Well, it turns out that one of the things that we have in, in sources is code comments, right? In ASCII Doctor, we also have code comments. So here, this block that begins with four slashes until the end. So everything that we have here is commented out. We don't have to delete it. We just leave it there. And uh, this is, uh, well, there are many things that I can tell you about ASCII that I can talk for hours, but I, can, I will also open the floor for any questions. So let's go back to uh, the homepage, uh, ASCIIDoctor.org, the repository, and github.com ASCII Doctor. We have, you wouldn't believe the amount of repositories and plugins that we have. We have extensions for everything. If you want to embed diagrams in ASCII, there is an extension called ASCII Doctor Diagram. Uh, we can search for that one here. Uh, diagram, here we go. Uh, this is a Ruby gem that, is there an example here that shows, yeah. So this is the ASCII content that you write in your ASCII doc file. I guess rendered like this. Do you like UML? You can have UML diagrams. You can have colors, you can have, see, UML diagrams using plant UML. And uh, there are a few other formats that are supported. Uh, the, the dot format from Graphviz or the SHAP project is double A from Python and so many other things. And uh, I cannot tell you, I cannot stress enough how easy it is to make this. You can also transform um, ASCII Doctor not just into HTML, but into PDF. You can create your own custom PDF themes so that uh, you get a much nicer rendered output. And so many of the great things that you can do here with ASCII doc. Uh, the community is, is big, is, is vibrant. We have so many projects that you wouldn't believe. So 
Uh, I hope that I got you excited about this. To the final question of, if I have too many content, too much content on the annotations, how are my APIs going to look like? Are my JAX RS endpoints, are they going to look ugly? Yes, they will. Is there a way that we can solve this problem? Yes, we can. There is not yet an extension, but there's a possibility to do the following thing. If you have in your, this JAX RS annotation, some other specific annotation or some kind of identifier, that you can pick up with an ASCII doc extension so that you can establish the link with that annotation and some additional ASCII doc content, there you go. Another thing that I failed to mention, if you don't like ASCII uh, Java doc because you have to use HTML, there is an ASCII doclet. So you can render ASCII doc as part of Java doc. So you can put anything that ASCII doc syntax allows you to do inside a Java doc comment. All right, so everything that I have for now, like I said, I can keep speaking for hours. So uh, you guys have any questions? You showed using the editor with IntelliJ, but I didn't see, it. I think only twice, some codices popped up. So how about the tooling? How about the tooling? Yeah, uh, there is some content here. I think there's table, no. Uh, there, this one used to have something. I, I personally don't use the code assist, but I can show you there is a ASCII doc effects.org, I believe. This is, no, that's not it. Come on, ASCII doc effects. Let's search for that. <coughs> there it is, see, it's ASCII doc effects com. This is a JavaFX based editor that gives you pretty much all the, uh, the benefits from a rich text editor. So it has syntax highlighting, content assist, and this whole web page is written in ASCII Doctor as well, as you can tell by this. The Eclipse editor, so IntelliJ does have some content assist, and Eclipse also has also some content assist. Even if you open this file, I think here, uh, this one is, not showing you any outline. But what if we add another section here? So this is section number two, and uh, Lauren Ipsum dollar seat Ahmed, consecutor blah, blah, blah. And this is section number three. So it kind of gives you this only. I think that the clips editor gives you a bit more, uh, but it, it depends on which kind of editor you like to use. help for that and not having to memorize yet another language. Yes. So that, that's, again, that's that kind of the point of the syntax that uh, it, it supposedly is small enough so that you can remember most of it. And uh, in terms of the attributes, if there is something that you have defined here on some of the file, well, it's up to you to, to, to follow certain patterns or certain naming conventions for the other attributes like these ones that are published or brought by a build tool, I will expect them to be documented on either on the Maven plugin or in the Gradle plugin. But if you were to do something like this, like uh, Gradle dash and then control space, there is no content assist yet. There's definitely not yet on the IntelliJ plugin. Oh, by default, these links will have something that looks like uh, section number two, but I can give it another name using double brackets, and this will be section two, like this, and I can copy that, go to the top and say, I'm gonna add a link here, and that link will be uh, double brackets like this, the section name, and this is section, this is link. And let's put uh, section two goes, 
to this here. You can see that this is rendered as link. And uh, I think this will execute the build again. Oh, we, I stop, right? So we go back to where we were, which is um, dev, GitHub, and this is the OCI Grail plugin, and inside docs, guide, and do create guide-t. So keep it running, execute the build, render, and show this. So now we have the sections. We have a link. It goes there. Yeah, now you have a link, but for example, if uh, you try to, to create a book from that, you would like to have a link in there, but you would like to have, well, the, the, the number of the section as it was created, uh, but just the name. Do you understand what I mean? Uh, Uh, so then instead of this text, this custom text, that to have the actual name. Yeah. Uh, I'm not aware of that because, uh, because I can re rearrange the sections and of course the, the numbers will be different. Uh, That's the point, that I do not have to keep track of the numbers myself. Well, the thing is that the table of contents will do it automatically for you, but not in these links. I think that for now, it may, be, it will, we will probably have to look to, to the, um, through the manual, but I think that the basic one is that you have to specify the, uh, the context, the, the text itself that you want to be using the link. Uh, something like a feature like auto links, I'm not aware if that thing exists. Well, the PDF will render exactly this content <laughs> as it looks like. It will also render this table of contents for you automatically. But uh, if you start to move things around, of course, perhaps this text, because it's explicit, will make no sense. And that's something that you have to look at. I'm afraid so, for now. But again, uh, looking through the, uh, the content, the, the manual, probably find the answer. Yes, uh, I'm glad that you brought LaTeX as, as part of this because it always brings up in the discussion. It's great that you can get a <laughs> Yes, it's, it's great that you can have this kind of a minimal syntax documents, but when you want to have the full range of, of um, uh, what's the word? Uh, the, uh, when, when you write, when you want to write these, these documents that have lots of features, then it's likely that you want, you want to go uh, LaTeX. It's, it's the way that it is. Do you know a way that uh, you can use a whole template, a styling template, so if you, if you want to render the whole document in, in your corporate identity way? Yes, supply CSS. Everything is stylable using CSS. We're using a default style sheet, but you can override it. You can also override the syntax highlighter to be a different one. So you want different colors or some other capabilities. Everything else, is, everything like that is supported. I'm using most of the defaults here, so that's why it looks like this. You can style it with CSS, but also we have support something called themes. And you can write a custom theme so that um, it will look exactly as you would expect. As a matter of fact, in my previous employer, we started, we migrated to ASCII-Doc for everything. So whenever we wanted to make an invoice, ASCII-Doc rendered as PDF using a custom thing. There you go. Has the letterhead of the, of the, um, of the company, a few other things. If we created a, a document to such as a, um, for a prospect, here's, here's a project that we want to build with you and everything, all the sections, all, every, all legal documents were also ASCII-Doc rendered as PDF using <laughs> bless you, a custom thing. And um, ah, there was something else that I wanted to showcase, but um, yes, uh, I'm not showing, of course, a presentation. I decided to do this live coding, but if I wanted to, I would have done, I would have chosen a cost, uh, presentation. And there are many ways for you to write presentations in JavaScript. And one of the projects out there, the ones most common, is Rebuild.js. 
There's an ASCII Doctor Rebuild JS project that allows you to write ASCII Doctor slides and render using Rebuild JS. And because Rebuild JS supports PDF, you can convert that into PDF slides as well using any kind of custom CSS. And that's what we use inside Gradle. In Gradle, we use Google Slides, uh, or we used to, and now we're moving into Reveal.js ASCII Doctor. Any other questions? I'm glad that you asked that. So the question is, how do I manage all these different uh, extensions and uh, packages and everything together? Well, uh, you start basically with uh, downloading ASCII Doctor if you go with Ruby or ASCII Doctor J if you want to use Java. So you can use it in the command line. And that the extensions are defined in the case of Ruby as gems. You use the standard uh, gem repository to locate them and install them. In the case of Maven and Gradle, you can point to the, the gem archive and have those dependencies automatically downloaded. Now, Diagram and PDF and a few other extensions are so common that ASCII Doctor J, which is used by both Maven and Gradle, have a special support so that you only specify the name and it actually knows exactly what needs to be downloaded. Now, you can download ASCII Doctor by hand or you can use something called SDK Man which is a package manager for Java-based projects. So think of uh, RVM for Ruby, the Ruby Environment Manager. But this one allows you to install uh, Java, Groovy, Scala, and ASCII Dr. J. So, uh, and it's, it works on anywhere where you have access to Bash. So once you have installed SDK Man, and uh, we can kill this one here, I can say SDK Man list ASCII Doctor J. This will tell me all the different versions that are available for ASCII Doctor. I have locally installed 155, but I could install 162, something like a SDK install or like this ASCII Doctor J 162. And this will know exactly from where to get it, uh, download it, uh, configure my path. Uh, it probably will take a moment. And now I can use it on the command line. Uh, if uh, this will rely on your gems also. So just use the gem package. Uh, there might be Docker, I'm not so sure. Uh, this tool is quite uh, lightweight. So you don't need to have more stuff. So now that I have this, I can say ASCII Dr. J uh, version, I think. Uh, nope, maybe it does one. Would that work? Yay! It's ASCII Doctor 8, even though I said I downloaded 162. Something is weird there. <laughs> because if I ask ASCII Doct uh, SDK which version I have installed, it clearly says that I have two installed and I'm using 162. Oh, maybe they didn't update the uh, the ID correctly. Well. It is what it is. Any other question? Well, is that it? Well, thank you very much for your time and thank you very much for K17T, T, 15T for, uh, yeah, it's quite a mouthful, especially for myself, uh, for hosting us and having this space. Uh, I'm looking forward to the, uh, the next opportunity. Uh, so thanks again. Now it's time for some mingle and pizza and more beer. <laughs>